Brian. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who give you the widest choice of cereals in the whole wide world. All the great grains in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, here he is. He's the master of my fate. He's the captain of my soul. He's the man that I married, Mr. Martin Gable. On my left, a rare beauty, the star of 20th Century Fox's upcoming film, Fraulein, Miss Donna Winter. Thank you, Martin, and for the privilege of being here tonight. And it's my pleasure to introduce a wonderful person, someone I met three years ago at Anne Shelley's house on the coast and never guessed that I would be here with him on What's My Line one day, Mr. Bennett Sir. Well, our wandering boy, John Daly, is in Tokyo tonight, so batting from the game is that well-known critic and connoisseur of letters, Mr. Clifton Fadiman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. You remember last week we had, as one of our contestants, a very charming young lady, Mrs. Patterson, whose occupation is being shot out of a cannon <laughs> at the Ringling Brothers Circus. Well, I told you I was going to go to the circus to see her shot out of a cannon. I did go yesterday, and she was shot out of a cannon. And as she went by rather rapidly, she said, give my best to watch my line. I thought she'd like to know. <laughs> also, you uh, remember that I told you that I was going to take 12 children about the age of six to the circus. And I did so via the New Haven Railroad. And I would like to report that on this trip, I personally took orders for and delivered 87 drinks of water in paper cups. <laughs> with the results that you might expect, and it was a very short trip, too. <laughs> well, as Bennett said, this is my second week in John Daly's shoes, and uh, even though I feel they're a little too big for me, I'm enjoying the experience. However, I know that you'll all be glad to know that uh, John will be back with us next week, uh, having convinced himself by his news flight that the world is actually round. That same world is full of interesting occupations and odd jobs, and week after week, what's my line comes up with them, uh, sometimes baffling our panel and uh, sometimes not. There'll be a mystery guest a little later on in the show, and we'll meet our first contestant in just... Okay, panel, are you ready? Yes. May we have our first contestant. Will you sign in, please? That's Father. Hugh. Michael. Bayard, is that right? I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, it's a fine town. I remember it very well. It's one of the many towns that Bennett spoke of. friends. <laughs> All your friends out here. You know our panel, Father? I think Bayard? I, I have to know you. Come over and sit down beside me. Let's we'll see if we can get on with this game. Now, uh, you understand how to play this game, Father Bay, in case I make uh, my usual errors, in case Arlene forgets to correct me. <laughs> now, uh, apparently it's obvious what Father Bain's noble profession is from his costume. But he has another occupation. Otherwise, he wouldn't be on the show. All right, let's show the audience in the theater and at home what your occupation is. Okay, I am instructed to tell you uh, 
about that. Father Bain is salaried. And we'll start with the lovely Arlene Francis this evening. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say that I think the only question I shouldn't ask was whether you worked for a profit-making organization. <laughs> I think you may ask any legitimate question. Well, this, uh, this extracurricular work you do, Father, uh, is it a service? Yes, Miss Francis, it is. Does it require uh, pencil and paper work? I use a typewriter, if that helps any. Uh, <laughs> no, but if it helps you. Yes or no, I should say, right? <laughs> well, uh, do you, would you include typewriter in your... Uh... I would prefer it. All right. In that case, the answer <laughs> would be yes. Is but... there any product whatsoever involved in what you do, Father? No, Miss Francis, there is not. That's one down, a nine to go, and passes us on to Martin Gable, the captain of her fate, <laughs> or of her soul. I forget which one it is. <laughs> I'm not sure myself now. <laughs> Both. I am. Uh, Father, is this work that you do connected with your basic occupation? It is, Mr. Gable. Very uh, much so. When it was said that you were salaried, do you receive a salary for this work in addition to your fundamental uh, income? Yes or no? Well, uh, uh, the idea here is, of course, that most priests receive a basic salary, yes. and whatever they're told to do, they do, and the salary stays the same. Yes, quite. Well, that's what I meant. Yes. Um, uh, is it m more connected with uh, youth than adults? No, not necessarily. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Winter. How um, about you? Are your services directed to both men and women? They are, Miss Winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, are these people better off for what you do? Well, if they're not, I'm <laughs> wasting an awful lot of time. <laughs> I think, um, in, in, in order to save the blushes of uh, Father well, Ben, that the answer to that is yes, they are better off. Thank you. Hope. Is your work educational? It could be so classified, I think. Could be. Um, do you need special training apart from... If you no. mean uh, in the sense of having uh, gone to a school or getting a degree or something of that sort, Miss Winter, would your answer not be no, Father? I think for the, in our term of reference, as John Daly's always saying. Would you like to sit over here for <laughs> <laughs> no, this The answer would be? I would say no. The answer case. would be no. no they, they will hang us if we no, say what, yes. No, what I meant was, well, has it anything to do with then something other than your, your calling as a, as a priest? Other than the fact that I am a priest? Yes. Yes, I think we would say I that. I think so, but I think we would have to say no to the previous. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Three down, to go and pass Miss Winter catches on sir. fast. <laughs> Father Bayon, would you say that this extracurricular work in which you're engaged has a cultural aspect? One moment. <laughs> I think so, Mr. Cerf. Yes. You remember, Mr. Cerf, uh, I'm beginning to learn this game myself, but one of the questions previously asked was, did it have any educational effect? The answer of the father to that was yes. If it had an educational effect, it would have a cultural one. Not too. necessarily. Father Bayon might teach people to grow carrots, <laughs> which would uh, be educational but would not be cultural. I think growing <laughs> carrots. Are not well, it may not be cultural, but there's certainly a good deal of cultivation involved in the carrots. <laughs> I, I don't even like carrots. <laughs> Let, let's go back. Uh, oh, the right. answer is uh, yes. yes to that. And you may now continue with your Would question. Would this special work, Father Bayon, have anything to do with either books or plays or pictures? No, I'm afraid it would not. That Mr. is Sir. four down and six to go, passing us over to Miss Francis. Would married people come to you for your services? If they married young, I presume. <laughs> well, here we go, just a moment. We'll be right back. <laughs> The answer, strictly speaking, as John would say, the answer to that question, if we are to take it literally, is no. Married people would not come to the father for his services. That's five down and five right. to go. We're about halfway I'm a little through. disappointed in you, Miss Francis. I once appeared on one of your shows, and you don't remember me at all. I, 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 well, you know, I, I don't remember that you appeared on one of my shows, and I apologize for that, Father, and <laughs> I'll appear on any of yours. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, isn't it nice that you two meet again, Miss Yes, Wayne? yes. I do have an idea. Uh, Mr. Gable. Uh, is this work of yours, this secondary work of yours, uh, uh, done more outdoors than indoors? No, it is not, Mr. Gable. Uh, that is six down and four to go. Miss Winter. Does anybody want a conference, or are you on something? Miss Winter, you no, may confer. No, I'm on absolutely nothing. Please, yes. May we have a conference for just a minute? Yes, indeed. Fifteen seconds. Since he doesn't talk to married it people, maybe he talks to marriage. people before exactly. they get married and has the sort of marriage counseling. Oh, it isn't. I can tell by the audience. You, you remember. Well, it might have something. And I said, you remember I said, Arlene, that I had to take your question very literally and give it a no answer. Now, Miss Winter. <laughs> Well, then, uh, Mr. Serves helped. Do you have anything to do with babies? With babies? I think with babies? Babies. Yes. babies. No, I'm sorry, no. Miss Winter. No oh. married people. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry about, Father. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have nothing to do with babies. The answer is no, Miss Winter. That's uh, seven down and three to go. Father, Father Bayon, do you have anything to do with uh, teaching people something aside from the doctrines of the church? No, I don't think so, Mr. You don't. Well, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, Bennett, we're uh, all on the wrong track. We'll give uh, the rest of, lose all the rest of the money, and I must tell you now that the Reverend Hugh Michael Bayon is a disc jockey. A little, uh, it's a little unusual to combine these two professions. How did you happen to get into this somewhat competitive business? Well, I do a television show out home for WOD, plug, and some friends of mine set up a new radio station, WGHN, plug. Now my, I can go home now, you see. <laughs> and uh, they wanted me to come down and do the uh, radio version of the television. And I thought, well, 15 minutes of straight talk on radio is not exactly my idea of top programming, unless you've got a man like Mr. Fadiman which I am not, yes, sir. and they only make Monsignor Bishop Sheens once in a great while. <laughs> so we decided to make it fit radio's own type of programming and make it a music show. And I find now in a survey we're making for the Catholic Broadcasters Association Convention that there are three of us doing it. Father Moore in Steubenville is doing religious music, and uh, Monsignor Patrick Smith in Santa Fe is doing it with Spanish, South American music. Well, maybe there's a real affinity, Father, between disc jockeyism and your noble profession. May anyway, I ask one wish... question, Mr. Yes, Chairman, Father Bayon? Yes, I'd be interested to know, Father, what percentage of rock and roll you play on uh, your... Exactly program. zero. Well, <laughs> good for you. Now, may we have our next contestant. Will you sign in, please? Roy Rogers. We will make no joke. <laughs> Rogers, uh, no relation, I assume. And uh, where are you from? Durham and Greensboro, North Carolina. Durham and Greensboro? And Greensboro. Are you a split personality? You divide yourself between these two? Probably. Durham's where the cigarettes come from. That's right. And Greensboro's where half of you comes from. Mm -hmm. Meet the panel over there and then follow me over to the desk, will you? Now, you know how to play this game? Yes, I do. Mr. Rogers, good enough. Uh, let's show the audience in the theater and at home just what your occupation is. Mr. Rogers is self-employed. And uh, we'll start with, may we, Donna Winter. It's a risk that we may. <laughs> no risk for us. Mr. Rogers, um, do you uh, deal in services? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Could I benefit from your services? Oh, possibly, yes. yes. You want to uh, work a little closer possibly, to the mic? Possibly, yes. Uh, <clears throat> do you deal with... Uh, Women rather more than with men? Yes. Yes. Um, do these women come to you for this yes. service? Do they come to uh, a special place? Are you, you in any... Yes. Yes. Why don't you go into this as a regular thing, Miss Winter, instead of wasting <laughs> your time and those other things you do? Um, do you touch them? Yes. Yes. Uh... 
<laughs> you wear a special uniform for what you do, or a special garb? No. No. That's one down and nine to go, but I think Miss uh, Winter has opened up, uh, obviously, a, a field, Mr. Surf, that she I has. assume Mr. you will Mr. now cultivate. Mr. Rogers, since you were speaking barely above a whisker, I didn't quite <laughs> hear... I didn't quite hear where you said you came from. Was Greensboro, North Carolina? Greensboro and Durham. And Durham? Yes. Well, now there are two colleges there. There's a women's college in Greensboro and Duke and Durham. That's right. Does your work have anything to do, possibly, with the students of either of those colleges? Mm. Specifically to do with them? Well, I would say related to tutoring them or something like yeah, that. Yes, as against headline. any other group of that's human beings. That's a no. Beings. I, I mean, see you know, about that. would be no. That's two down and eight to go. I'm getting the hang of this thing. All right, Arlene. He said he touched them, Bennett. Yes, well, he did. Uh, <laughs> never, Bennett. Never teaches, never touch. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Do uh, women improved after they've been to see you? Mm, yes. Uh, is there something in your treatment or your work that beautifies them in some way? Yes. Uh, would you have a beauty salon or a massage salon of some kind? Of some kind? I mean, of that category? Oh, well, if you're going to be so specific. I mean, like a barbershop or a beauty salon or a Turkish bath. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody applaud the Turkish bath. I'm for them, too. <laughs> well, let's do Turkish Somebody bath. Somebody will send you <clears throat> in the mail, Ali. Uh, well, shall I take one of those categories? Uh, Go ahead. Let's take the Turkish bath as long as uh, somebody applauded. It's the wrong one, but then, is it? No. <laughs> no, that's no. three down and seven to go. I, we've, uh, do you excluded. have a barbershop, Mr. Rogers? No. That is four down and six to go, Miss Winter. Uh, yes, but it could be a massage, you know, it could be a massage. Well, all right, beauty parlor. Yes, that is Very right. Good. Yeah. Very beauty good. Beauty parlor is correct. Right. Actually, uh, Mr. Rogers is, has a beauty parlor, and specifically, he is a hairdresser. Is that correct, Mr. Rogers? Hairstylist. Hairstylist, I beg your pardon. I, I always certainly put like my the foot way you've it. done your own, Mr. Rogers. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's only, uh, my curiosity. Beg your pardon, Mr. Gable. Is Mr. Rogers a horse? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Just tell us, can you tell us briefly why you have that beard? Is oh, Greensboro is having a 150-year celebration, the sesquicentennial. Oh, yeah. So most of the men are growing beards. Uh -huh. and that's all there is to that, Very in case you wanted to know. Wait till, Remi Wait till Remington <laughs> Rand finds out about that. <laughs> he can practice on himself. Good to have you with us, Mr. Rogers. You said about the time. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here's a word from our alternate sponsor. We come now to our mystery celebrity, and uh, during this interval, I assume that you have put on your blindfolds or that Miss Winter and Mr. Surf are now about Oops. to put them on. Very pretty the girls do look <coughs> even behind those blindfolds. Okay, will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? are a little different here. They get just uh, one uh, time of one chance apiece. And I think we'll start with Bennett, sir. Shall we? Well, just Bennett? to get this into the right or wrong groove quickly, are you a representative of the entertainment industry? Uh, yes. Have you appeared uh, in the... Pardon me. Go ahead. Pass Have you appeared in the theater? Maso mm, Menos. What, what was Maso that? Menos, eh? You have to explain that to the illiterate to your left. Uh, more or less? More or less, that means. Uh, have you appeared in musical shows? Uh, see. See, that means yes, too. I'm learning more languages than I can handle. Uh, Miss Winter. Do you appear on television? See. Mr. Sir. Uh, have you ever been or spent any considerable amount of time in Mexico? No. All right, that's one down and nine to go, Arlene. 
Are you doing a television show of your own? Of her own. Maso Menos. Is that so? I, after consultation, Marcel I will Minos. have to say that the literal answer to that question is no. She does not have a television show of her own. Two down, eight to go, Mr. Gable. Are you now appearing in a Broadway show? In a Broadway show? No. No, three down and seven to go. Do you appear frequently as uh, a guest artist on television? I have to answer that literally. No. No is the answer. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Well, are you, you... You haven't got a television show of your own, but might it be said that you are a member of a cast, a regular cast that does appear in a regularly scheduled television show? Uh, C. Yes, the literal answer to that is that she is a member of the entire cast of a television show. That passes us back to Miss Francis. Is that a musical... <clears throat> My voice is changing. Is that a musical show? No. No, uh, five down and five to go. We're halfway through our cards. Mr. Gable. Is it a situation comedy show? At times. At times. Is it meant to be? Uh, uh, I don't... No. I think on the whole, the answer would be no <laughs> to that. Whole, don't yes. you? That is six no. down and four to go. We ought to tie this up. Miss Winter. Are you part of a, of a panel show? No. That is seven down, three to go. Maybe you're glad of it, too. <laughs> Mr. Sir. In the show in which you appeared, do there sometimes enter cowboys and Indians with guns and sheriffs and things? No, thank heaven. <laughs> well, eight down and two to go. Do, Arlene. Have you appeared in any nightclubs or, or um, hotel uh, rooms? <laughs> <laughs> I think we understand I mean, what Miss Francis means. Well, we both, which floor? <laughs> the answer to that would be yes, yes, surely. All right, Mr. Gable. And this, uh, uh, we ought to be able to get it now. Since my wife has told me she knows who it is, and when she says she knows, she usually knows. No, I don't. After all, I didn't know about Father Bean, but I do have an idea. Well, <laughs> tell me, and I will relay it. Uh, no, I, I, I think it may be uh, Jane Gable. Powell. Jane Are you Jane Powell? <laughs> Miss Powell is, is currently appearing uh, at the plaza, is it not? First, yes, sir. I had no idea that I was such a mystery to... Uh, <laughs> well, Miss Powell said she more or less was in the movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we think that, of that you as more. Well, they don't make musicals movie. too often now, you see. Yeah. You <laughs> how many talents you have a dramatic show, too, don't you? You appear very often in a... Yes, I have. Yeah. Aren't you going to be on this panel so next talented. week, Miss Powell? I wish I were, Mr. Surf, but I am unable to attend. Oh, but I'm looking forward to the next invitation. <laughs> Our loss. What are you going to do after the Persian Room engagement ends? Well, I'm going to Dallas, Texas, as a matter of fact, to appear in Oklahoma. So oh, I'm looking good forward enough. to that a great deal. We're all day. looking forward to it. Congratulations. Hope you have a fine time down in, is it Dallas? Yes, Dallas. It's a huh? big town. Well, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> good to have you with good us. Good night. We'll be back after this word from our sponsor. We'd like to thank Donna Winter for gracing our panel tonight with her wit and her beauty. Thank you. And I announce again that John Daly, perhaps to the relief of many of you, will be back next week. Uh, I've been moderator for two weeks. I've enjoyed it enormously. I think I should thank both the panel and this audience for your patience and courtesy. And now this is Clifton Fadiman saying good night, Arlene. Good night, Clifton, and you have done honor to the chair. We've been very lucky to have you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Martin, I may say the same for you. Good night, dear. <laughs> good night. And good night, Donna. You were wonderful. Good night, uh, Martin. Thank you so much. Good night, Dennis. Thank you. Thank heaven for pretty girls. <laughs> good night, Kev. Great to have good you. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being on What's My Life. If you'd like to attend our broadcast, 
and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. This is Hal Sin speaking. <laughs>